I have to check that. Okay, cool. Okay, cool. Thanks, Connor. And uh, today we're gonna be talk about the uh, chapter four, the classification, uh, and then the objective of today's uh, today's today's chapter is about first uh, we have to compare and contrast the classification with a uh, uh, linear regression that we've learned through the past weeks, and uh, then we can we we ha we have to learn to how to perform the classification use these four methods and identify the strengths and weakness between these, these various models. And then we will use the, uh, the, the, the then we have to learn how to model the count data using the Poisson re regression. And first of all, let's take a, a quick overview of what the, the classification is all about. The, uh, the classification is the process that uh, help us to make the inference uh, uh, to the predicted, uh, to predict the qualitative uh, uh, that in other words, the categorical response variable. Um, if there are a uh, few uh, techniques that will be that we will discuss today, and uh, uh, apart from the four main methods that uh, the k nearest neighbors that we talked in the in the second chapter in the statistical learning is also one of these techniques that we can use to uh, to make classification. And here are three examples from the book that uh, that are the uh, the classification problems. The first of them is that uh, if we if uh, if a person arriving at the emergency room and they, he has a set of the symptoms, and we should do uh, based on these symptoms, we should classify whether uh, uh, whether he's uh, under some medical conditions. And in, in this model, we use the symptoms as our predictor. And uh, the medical condition he should receive is the response variable that we would we would we had to predict. And the second example is that um, in our online banking service, that we was we want to determine whether or not the transaction be performed on the site is fraudulent on the basis of these predictors, such as the user's IP address, the past transaction history, and so on and so forth. And uh, the, re the response variable is that we've determined whether or not that is a binary uh, response variable. And the third case is, uh, uh, is a case about the uh, uh, sequencing uh, DNA data and use this, this sort of sequ uh, DNA sequence data, we, we can predict whether the, the presence of this uh, sequence is, uh, uh, is for some del del deleterious gene. And it's also is the answer of yes or no. And uh, these two charts uh, uh, shows that uh, in the case of uh, 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 classifying the fraudulent activity, we can say that uh, based on two predictors, that the first is the annual income of the, our clients, and the second is their, their monthly credit card balances. We can see that uh, uh, the first is the balance, the relationship between the balance and the income. And, uh, the, the, and the two different color and the shape classifies the, our cost, customers into the one that is the, the, the orange one is the one that uh, default and the blue one, blue circle one is the one that not defaults that we can say that uh, uh, upon the Y, uh, the Y scale that is the income, we can see that uh, it's distributed uh, alongside, along on all the scales and we can see that there are not much difference between the uh, whether his income is high or low, that it will be leading to leads to him to be a defaulter or not defaulter. Whereas uh, if we look at the balance, the, the X scale, we can see that there is a much striking difference between the between their uh, their behavior. If their balance are low, it's a high possibility that that you know, the guy is the the one that is the not defaulter. Whereas if the balance is high, uh, it, it will uh, it tend to lead that uh, it will, it will be the guy that will default on the you, balance. Before you yeah. get too far into it, sorry to interrupt. Um, do you want okay. to share your okay. screen? A uh, shipment you didn't see my screen? <laughs> no. Oh, I'm sorry for that. <laughs> oh, okay. I, I, oh well, I didn't check for that. Sorry for that. Can you see this by now? <laughs> Can I see Rena? Right there you go. Yeah, good. Perfect. Go. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I used my uh, I used a group starting room in my school, so I, I'm first using it. I don't know how to set up. 
Uh, you guys are, are all set, right? Can hear, can see the screen, can hear my voice. Okay, I'm sorry yeah. for that. Yeah, yes. we're good. Okay, good. Cool. Okay, uh, let's go up. Okay, and then the uh, after that we use that chat. We can use the chat on the right side that to 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 uh to to see the striking difference between uh their behavior in terms of the balance and whether they were default in terms of the income and whether they were default. And this is a kind of introduction about the uh, classification problem. And the first problem we want to ask is that why not? Uh, why, why don't we use the linear regression that we've discussed so far to do this kind of analysis or prediction? First of all, that uh, we can see that the, the biggest uh, difference between the classification problem and the regression problem is that the, regress, uh, the, the response variable we use here is qualitative. That is, uh, it, 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 it has some specific response uh, that can be categorized into uh, different categories. The first, for example, if the, uh, if the uh, patients can get a stroke, you will be classified as a one, and they would get this uh, electric seizure, it will be classified as two, and so on and so forth. So this is the uh, biggest difference between the classification and linear regression. And if we want to use a linear regression to predict uh, the results, we can see that uh, it will be unable to predict that. All, all, the, all the results is hard to, hard to uh, uh, interpret, interpret because uh, the response in the linear regression can get uh, the, uh, uh, a number that have many digits or even have some digits that are uh, that, uh, that, um, that is not an integer. And the second problem is that, uh, that that's, that's the same problem that I um, discussed before is that they, they will not provide a meaningful estimate uh, for our results. And the, uh, the third that is that we can, if we want to predict uh, whether the, the items will be classified as a yes or not, we will, we, the response variable we will uh, vote it here is uh, the proportion, the probability of the response being a stroke uh, or being a drug overdose. And we want, we want to get a, a response of a variable that's ranging from the zero to one, because that's, that is the, uh, the, the reasonable value that we can get from a probability, from a proportion. And if we use a linear regression to predict that, we can see that if we, uh, and the get a, get a model here that we predicted from our data, it can go beyond the zero or even beyond one, which is hard to interpret because we do not have a probability that's a negative or probability that go with one. So here we have to come up with a specific uh, modeling skills to, to help us to make the prediction. And here we can see that uh, if we want to uh, 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 constrain our results in terms of the zero and the one, we have to model the data in terms of this shape, which is uh, what we are going to talk about. And so the first technique we're doing to discuss today is the uh, logistic regression. So before I go into the logistic regression, is there any uh, problems in terms of the first two sections? Okay, sure. Uh, uh, okay, okay, cool. And, uh, and the, the first technique is the logistic regression. In terms of the logistic regression, the, um, the thing that we want to predict is the probability of the response that I already discussed before. And the, we, we use the, and in terms of this, uh, this, this, uh, this example, we use the, we, we, want, we, we the, the, the predictor we use is the binary here. And uh, we want to, if we want to predict the uh, probability of uh, of uh, of y in term, uh, given the specific x, we use a specific technique here that is called the odds. We compute the odds of uh, the y happens uh, under the given condition of x, and as we can see in the in our book, the odds. The odds function, the function of, uh, oh, can you see my another screen 
currently I'm I'm changing my screen to the PDF. Can you see that? Can you guys? Uh no, I'm only seeing the uh the okay, okay, oh okay. Oh no, no. I'm sorry for that. Uh that's a new sheet. Okay, I got it. Can you, see, can you guys see it right now? Yep. Yeah, okay, cool. And the art, the art function here is uh, the first we come up with a, a fraction with, with the numer numerator as the probability we want to, we, are, we, are, we, are, uh, we want to predict or, or the, the uh, and the, the numerator is the, in terms of the uh, example of a, a binary uh, classification, the, the denumerator is the one minus is the probability of it happening. So, uh, uh, so in this case, the R ratio uh, uh, reflects that the uh, probability of uh, X happening, or the probability of Y happening in given X uh, over the probability of one minus Y, that is the opposite uh, situation uh, happening uh, on the given X. So this is called the R. And the R can take the value between zero and the infinity bigger uh, value. So uh, this, this, this is a, a specific technique that we want to use in the logistic regression. And we back down that, the whole problem can be uh, modeled as this, is that we log, we take the log of the R of, some, of the uh, Y happening on the given X and into a linear model that we are very familiar with uh, into uh, which has a, a beta x and beta y is the estimate of its the parameters and the x has the a predictor. Uh, this this whole uh, function is called the log out or in or the short or in logit as the shorthand. So the uh, next problem we want to uh, solve is how to estimate this co coefficient. The technique we use here is the maximum likelihood, which is a more generic. Uh, generic uh, estimation technique uh, uh, and the, uh, the, the underlying mm, the underlying logic is that we have we want to uh, uh, get to maximize the likelihood uh, on the specific coefficient that uh, we get for each uh, for each uh, for each predictor I don't know if I uh, expand that Clearly, but uh, the uh, uh, but you can but you, but in but in this this book we can just to learn that if we uh, the the uh, the coefficient we get can help us to get the maximize uh, the likelihood that we can classify the results into y instead of other results. So so under this coefficient we can get the we we have the max. Uh, uh, confidence that we can get the results of y. So uh, under this technique, uh, we uh, we can estimate the uh, corresponding coefficient of beta zero and beta y. Uh, uh, so uh, based on these uh, assumptions uh, here, uh, we can construct this logic function and they use this beta zero and the beta one to uh, to put to to model a predictive model for our uh, classification. And this is the simplest uh, logistic regression. And we can uh, extend this situation to a multiple one, which uh, take counts into multiple predictors. And uh, the, the, model, uh, the model is uh, largely at the same with the simple one, except that they have uh, more uh, expector, uh, predictors and uh, uh, and then they, they will, we will get this logic function. And then it comes to, to, the, to the interpretation. If we want to interpret this model, we have, uh, after, we, uh, after we do some R or Python uh, analysis, and we have to turn this logic result, the result is a log, log R, turn, turn back into the probability that we are, uh, uh, that is of the real interest. And uh, uh, based on some uh, algebra, 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 we can come back into this form that is the uh, the e to the power of this function, and the, the numerator is this uh, function. So uh, that's the uh, kind of the gist of the logistic regression. 
And uh, I don't know if that, that expand is clearly enough. So if you guys have any question, you can come up with it. Mm. So, so far we uh, we come to the uh, basic uh, logic of the logistic uh, regression. And uh, here, uh, here is the example of uh, uh, multi, 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 multiple logistic regression. And uh, there, there's a two figure, the figure on the left uh, shows that if we want to predict the, uh, predict the default rate of a client, which is a student uh, in the origin line or non-student in the blue line. And the student or non-student is, is a binary predictor in this model. And the other predictor is their credit card balance. We can see that the, uh, based on this graph, if, um, if uh, as the credit card balance goes up, the default rate, uh, the, uh, no matter if he's a student or not, the overall default rate were as well increasing. However, if we uh, if we set a credit balance to a specific level such as the uh, fifteen hundred, and we can see that if if the guy is a student, and uh, you will tend to have a lower uh, default rate than the uh, non student. So this is a, a case of a multiple uh, logistic regression. But there will be some confounding here that will be discussed, um, discussed uh, uh, more specific. But but it turns the knot. The knot didn't see much about it. So we we'll turn back to the turn back to the book, which you can see that uh, first of all. First of all, is that uh, let me check. Uh, okay, first of all, if we the the overall uh, coefficient or the overall regression results is here that we can see the model is the first the beta zero is uh, minus ten, uh, whereas we take into uh, three predictors. The predictive for the the first the coefficient for the first predictor is this value and the second is this and the third is this. Uh, uh how to pre interpret it that? Uh, if uh there's one unit increase in the balance, the logic, the log odds of someone being default increased by the zero 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 fifteen seven, which we have to interpret back into the uh p into the px the probability. Whereas uh, we can see that uh, uh, there uh, is a much complicated calculation here, but we uh, uh, focus on the direction is that the balance and the income has a positive relation to the final result, whereas the student uh, predictor has a, a negative in fact, negative effect. But if we just uh, uh, just modeling a simple case is that uh, with the single predictor as the student or not, we will get uh, a result that is positive rather than negative. Why is that happening? The the thing is that uh, for, uh, we when we interpret the multiple log logistic regression, we tend we have to fix other values of the uh, the values of other predictors such as the balance and the income, and we will get the result that the student is less likely to default than non student. But if we just uh, uh, modeling with a single predictor, the the whole model will set to uh to to a uh, overall to average the overall values of uh other uh, other predict other predictors. It suggests the opposite effect. That is, the overall student default rate is higher than the non-student default rate. That can be show that can be exhibited in this two dashed line. The orange one is the non-student, whereas the uh, green uh, the orange line is the student. The green blue one is the student. So this shows the uh, con uh, contra contra contradictory contra contradictory result. So based on this uh, distinction, uh, we we had to uh, in, in our uh, back in our uh, real life modeling, we can say that a student is overall tend to be riskier than a non-student. 
And if, if no information about their credit card balance is available, however, that uh, then the students uh, have to, uh, the, the overall uh, uh, credit card balance of a student is higher than the overall credit card students of a non-student. So, so the student is riskier than a non-student. But if we have, uh, if we set the credit card balance to the same between a student and a non-student, then we can see that this, this student is less riskier than a non-student. So this, so this is an interesting fun, uh, and this is an interesting result from the confounding um, between two uh, predictors and we should pay attention to, I guess. Uh, so, uh, so far this is about the multi, uh, the multi, uh, uh, multi, 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 sorry, multiple logistic regression. And then we can also renew the case of the multi nominal. That is the, uh, the result of the response variable is more than two. Uh, so the case uh, greater than two classes. And we can, uh, in this case, we can select the single case to serve as the baseline. And uh, if, if we want to uh, calculate the odds, the, the, the denominator of this function will be the probability of that, of that baseline case happening. Uh, so, uh, so this uh, interpretation will be much complex, complex since it we have to, we have to model uh, a set of different uh, multinomial logistic regression model in terms of each uh, classes uh, compared to the baseline classes. And uh, we can, in the book, we can use the softmax coding, which we I, I do not I actually do not understand, but we will regret uh, re review that in the class in the chapter time. So after this, all these things about the logistic regression, uh, it 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 actually is not an ideal one uh, for for all of our problems of classification because it uh, the 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 function of which uh, provides the uh, sub substantial separation between two classes. Um, uh, but if we, if there's more than two classes, the parameter estimate of the uh, regression will be unstable because there, there are multiple models for it. And also uh, if the prediction, uh, if the distribution of our predictor is approximate no more, but, and the sample size is more, then, then we can use the more generative, generative modeling that we, which is more accurate than the logistic regression. So here we will talk about the generative modeling uh, act as an extending to the case of more than two, uh, uh, two response classes. And here's some uh, common notations here. The K stands for the class, the pi K, the pi on the script K uh, 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 stands for the overall prior, a priori probability that we can know beforehand or without much effort. And the FX, FKX is the density function here for the underlying distribution that we are, uh, we are, we are assuming. And the, 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 the underlying, the underlying uh, logic of uh, the generative models here is the Bayes theorem that we want to know the posterior probability of Y given X uh, uh, if we know the priori uh, probability of the Y happening and the, uh, and the uh, density function of the underlying distribution, the X uh, uh, divided by the underlying, the priori probability of the X uh, uh, of each class. Uh, so the, so the, based on this, Function we can extend the classification problem into the linear discriminate analysis and the quadratic discriminate analysis and the naive Bayes. The first is the linear one. The linear one uh, is, uh, has some assumption about first is that we assume the we, we assume that the underlying distribution of each predictor is normal or Gaussian uh, with the cost fixed mean, but they share the same variance term across all classes. That is their, their, their variance is all the same. So uh, based on our knowledge of the normal distribution, we can know that the density function is here, a much a very complicated one, but we can refer to as we, as we derive the function of the LDA. 
And then we want to know the posterior uh, probability that is uh, given the specific uh, a predictor that we can pre predict, predict the uh, probability of uh, why happening given this uh, predictor. So the function here is that the high k is the um, is the uh, priori probability of k happening that is our response variable, and the uh, the one following that is the density function of the probability of the uh, of the predictor, and the uh, the denominator is the one we discussed before the prior probability of x uh, uh, across all kinds of uh, classes. So. Uh, you sum the 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 function we want to know is the same as the one we use in the logistic regression is that we want to find the maximized uh, likelihood of 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 uh of if we if we know the predictor to a specific value that we want to the maximized likelihood that the, this 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 case is classified as k, so we get this uh, decision function. That is uh, by deriving this uh, take, taking the log of this p uh, function and deriving that into this function, and we can see that this function has a, a property is that it has just one one predictor that is a variable as our x, whereas the other value can be specific to each k that we can treat as the constant here in terms of each class. So. We can see that is a is a is a function that is linear rather than quadratic or more power. So the so the decision boundary here is that we want to find if the if the response is a binary is that zero or one. We want to find the boundary that the if we want to cast this case as one, the 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 corresponding maximum likelihood equals to the, if we want to classify it at, at two or zero, the maximum likelihood. And when they're equal, they, they form as the boundary between these two classification. And here we can see that uh, this one is the, uh, is the case of uh, a normal distribution of X classified, be, uh, the, the, the result classified as zero. And this is a case which is result, which will, will be classified as a one. And when their their likelihood is equal, we can cast, uh, we can set this uh, the the value of x uh, as the, our uh, decision boundary uh, between each other. If the if the result is greater is to the right of this x, we can classify it as this as this one. And we 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 treat it as the one if if the is the result of this. Given x is to the right of it, we can quantify it as the green as this green green response, which we can uh, look at it zero. So, so, uh, so the right is that we sample it into twenty observations and the draw a histogram between them. Uh, draw draw a histogram, and we can see that the the uh, LDA that we computed from this distribution is the it is the uh, dash is the uh, is the solid line, whereas the the underlying bias decision boundary is the dashed line. They are not very much different from each other, so we can say that this uh, classification is uh, uh, is near to the uh, accurate. And so we have we can do, and also we have to approximate the estimate of each in our training data. So these are some functions that we can use to estimate our uh, the specific mean value of each classification and the shared uh, uh, variance uh, across all across each classes. And the, uh, and the, there are some uh, notes that we can pay attention of. And the and the, the pi k here is very simple that uh, we can we can get from our. Uh, for our training observations is that the proportion of the M classified as a K divided by the overall case, the total number of our training observation. And so we can get here it is that the estimated K, the estimated model of our LDA classification. Uh, so that's the simple, simplest case, which we only have one predictor. But if we have multiple predictors, we, we will have a, a, we have a, have a covariance matrix 
with the uh, row as the one predictor and the, the column as the another predictor and the, their all over, over the diagonal is their variance or the, the variance and the uh, other 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 interest is the covariance. And this we can, uh, if we have two predictors here, we can model into, into this 3D graph, which is the two multivariant Gaussian density function. And then the, uh, and then the case is that they are, they are uncorrelated, which means that they, they do not have, their covariance between two predictors is zero. So we can say that it's very formal. It's only just uh, if we take a, take a, take a, take a flash uh, in, in each, uh, in each level, we can see a, see a, see a circle. And if they, they were, they were correlated, the, the, the overall, this, the overall graph will turn into a elliptic uh, circle. So uh, this, 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 this density function is somewhat compl complicated than the one that we only have one predictor. And uh, uh, but but the underlying logic is the same. We want to estimate. Uh, we want to use the same function uh, uh, from above. That is the this one function to take the logic and to get the maximum um, likelihood of each classes uh, in terms of each uh, predictor, each level of the if, if each value of the predictor. So the so the result of the decision fun function is here. With uh, in the max in the matrix form, uh, and uh, uh, if we if, uh, if we just to simplify them, we can get we can get a we can get a function that that uh, that is also linear, uh, because we we assume that uh, their variance is the, all the same without the covariance. So so in terms of the graph, we can see that there is. Uh, two predictors, and uh, we can uh, classify them into three uh, classes, the three responses, and uh, they all share a, a Gaussian distribution with the same variance. And if we want to classify them, we can see that there are three linear lines that act as the boundary, the uh, boundary line that we can um, determine whether we classify it into A or B or C. Uh, and the, and then the result of that is much uh, not much different from the real base decision boundary. So here, so here we talked about the uh, LDA, which is a, a simplicated case. But if we uh, if we assume that the underlying assumption of different classes is not uh, they they are correlated, uh, they must they they do not have the same variance across each class. We will get to the quadratic form, but at the first part, we first we have to know whether our model is correct or not. That is, uh, that is the technique we use here is to use the confusion metric uh, of our classification. We can see that uh, uh, we uh, in terms of the um, uh, in terms of terms of the uh, confusion metrics. Uh, uh, remember that we can uh, this metric is same as we the type one type two error we get from the hypothesis testing, and uh, that is uh, if we predict this one to be true, uh, if we predict this one to be true, and the uh, and the, this one is actually to be true, uh, so we can uh, come up with this matrix two by two matrix. The first is that we predict it to be true, whereas the underlying one is not true, which is negative. So this prediction is false positive. And if it's true, it's true positive. And the uh, vice versa is the true negative and the false negative. Uh, under this um, matrix, we first we can we can calculate the overall error rate. That is, uh, if we we're taking into account the, the overall case of our of our training data set, and uh, uh, this true prediction is the is the one down the diagonal line, the true negative and the true positive. Whereas all these false predictions, we take the proportion of this false prediction to get the overall uh, test error. Um, so, so in this case, in the, in, in the in the example showed in the book, the test error is not not much great. It's very it's very low. It's to the uh, single digit, I guess. I, I remember. Uh, yes, the overall test rate is just 
2.75, that is the, uh, the sum of 2.52 and the 2.32 uh, divided by the uh, divided by the 10,000. Uh, but the overall training rate, although it's very small, but it usually tend to be lower than the test level rate, which is the real quantity that we are interested of. So, so, uh, so if we want to use this model in the, our test, we have to, uh, we have to be pay attention of this. And then secondly, is that also the overall training rate is very low. But if we just uh, use our model to predict all, all, all our result to be true, but uh, so we will, uh, so uh, all, all our result to be false. So we'll get six, uh, sixteen. 19,667 prediction of the true negative results. But the other 333 results will be false, which is false negative. So in terms of our calculation of the overall test rate, the overall test rate is just no more than 3.3%, which is also very low because the, the overall uh, true negative case in this, in this example is, is just just that much. So uh, this is uh, this, this shows that um, regardless of these trivial examples, uh, this is trivial, the, the trivial null classific classifier will achieve an error rate that is only just a bit higher than the training set error rate. So bear that in mind, we we oh, actually we will uh, we we, can, we have to look at other metrics shows our the accuracy of this model. So the there are two metrics that we uh, uh we 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 can uh we can we, we pay attention here. First is the error rate of the type one type two error, which is the which is classified as the uh false positive or the uh true uh, false negative uh false false negative and the false positive I guess I guess I guess I guess I get it right Right, the, the two error rates, they are, they are different error rate because the, this rate is calculated by the dividing this value by this, this value. And then this one is divided by this, this one. So um, we, we have to pay attention to that. And in terms of the bank, uh, bank, bank uh, the fraudulent cost prediction data with the, the, the one that is much of much importance is that whether we can predict this one as the real default. Uh, if 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 it's it's actually it will actually default in their future action uh, in their future uh, uh, future activity. So the type two I will I guess is of the real interest here is that two eighteen fifteen is that the eighteen one divided by three uh, uh, hundred and thirty 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 three. But that value in this data set is very low, which is just 24% or something. So, so actually this, this data does not provide a much robust uh, result that we really care about. So uh, this, this is called the sensitivity and the specificity of this data, the, the performance here. So if we want to reach a higher sensitivity, uh, we can, we can Mm, we can lower our threshold of classifying one being default or not uh, from 0 0.2 to uh, 0 0.25 to 0 0.2. And this chart here shows the, shows the difference here. Uh, and in terms of the time here, we cannot go much uh, overall uh, details of it. And this is how the curve uh, uh, reflects the overall accuracy of our model which is the uh, true positive rate, which we really want it to be higher. And uh, as the, as the, and the its relationship between the false positive rate, which is the opposite one, and the, and the, and the real value we want to uh, measure the accuracy of the model is the area under this curve, which we show as the AUC under this curve to be, to be much higher for us to uh, ensure that this model is accurate enough for us. So that is that is a confusion matrix. And then you, if we want to uh, extend our linear case to the quadratic case, uh, we can have a much complicated formula here, but with the same underlying logic of, uh, of computing the Bayes classifier. And in this case, the 
under underlying value would be a quadratic form. Um, and also we want to classify the case to uh, each response for which the fifth quantity is the largest, is that, that this value is the largest. Uh, so here we, we have to ask why we would choose the QDA uh, uh, rather than the LDA is that uh, there are some considerations we have to uh, look at. First is the bias variance trade-off, uh, which is that uh, in the LDA case, uh, if the underlying, if the underlying uh, uh, classification, underlying classifier is distributed uh, as, a, as a quadratic form, which is a curve, so the LDA would, be, would have a higher bias whereas cannot be compensated by their low different low variance of this model. Um, so uh, a less uh, flexible model here will not perform uh, will perform will not perform that better for us to choose. Uh, and uh, so if the case is that the assumption of the K case have the common com covariance metric, that, that if that is like assumption is badly old, the LDA will suffer from this problem. So the conclusion here is that when the training set has a very large sample data and, the, and also the underlying we review as the underlying distribution, the common variance metric C is very untenable, we tend to use the QDA to achieve a better model. So here is the uh, uh, discriminate analysis model. And the other case, the third case is the naive bias, which uh, do not assume the underlying distribution is no more, uh, it's normally distributed, but assume that the um, uh, within each class, the predictors between each other are independent. So that is, we can we can directly multiply them each other to get uh, overall density function here. So why is that powerful than the uh, DA uh, method? Because that uh, by assuming that they are independent, uh, between each other, we're assuming that there's no association between the predictor. This, this makes our uh, a modeling process much simpler and uh, uh, and uh, handy. Uh, it's a much handy process. And also, um, it's not uh, also it's not the case in most of our uh, practical situation, but it's more com convenient. And if our uh, sample value is a bit small, sample size is a bit small. And the uh, probably the, the the number of our parameters is large. We can also can kind of distance with that. Um, so uh, as it tends to reduce the variance, uh, although though it has some bias, but this trade off will tell us which model is the best. So we have three options here. The first is that uh, we can assume that the 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 distribution of of our Predictors of across each uh, classification is a uh, uh, normal no 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 normal distribution, uh, and the predictor is drawn from the uh uni uh the normal distribution, the so we can uh, use the QDA like classification mode uh, still here with the diagonal class specific covariance metric, but if the if the underlying distribution is not per it's not a normal normal distribution and we do not make an assumption of which of what distribution it is, we can use the non-parametric parametric estimate here, which we'll discuss late in later chapter. And the third, if we uh, do not want to use a non-parametric estimation, we can just uh, assume that each, each class is independent and use the naive bias here. So these are three generative classification model here. And here a basic assumption that we come we com compare between each method. Uh, so uh, the, caveat, the the huge takeaway here is that the LEDA and the logistic regression that all assume the logic of the posterior probability. So we can see that the logistic regression is a simple case of LDA, whereas the QDA, uh, uh, some, the, some, the, the assumption of QDA results in a model that is quadratic in X, so this is not this is very different from the linear one, and the linear is the simplest the case of a QDA as it assumes that the uh, the variance across each class classes is the same, 
And the uh, LDA is a simple case of the naive space here, uh, which you can see in the, uh, from the function in the book here, in the, in the book. And uh, also the LDA has a very strict uh, condition because it assumes that the underlying distribution is normal, uh, is normal and uh, has a common within class covariance metric. Uh, uh, the now, uh, but the, uh, the naive Bayes can fit a more flexible one uh, because the, the naive Bayes function do not assume that uh, that the underlying uh, underlying uh, underlying distribution uh, and just assume that they are independent of each other. So uh, uh, so here we can see that there are some comparison between them in terms of the analytic form. And the KN, we, we, we can return to that because we have a uh, we have a problem in our practice that we talk about the KN that we, we can return to that in our next week discussion. And in terms of the empirical comparison, they provide the six scenario, but in terms of the time, uh, we can we we'll see we have run out of time, so we I I, I just keep to that. Uh, we can we can talk about it in our next uh, next week, and the last part of it of today's chapter is about the GLM, which is the more generalized uh, uh, generalized form of our linear models. Why we want to talk here is not kind of is it actually is kind of different uh, from our uh, of, from our discussion of the classification. Uh, so I don't know why 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 the also want to include this part in this chapter, but we have to discuss of it because it's in because that it is what it is. So the, in this GRM model, the 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 the, the difference between that uh, uh difference between this GRM and our uh ordinary linear regression and the classification approach is that the response uh variable here is a count data. For example, in the case, the number of facts per hour that will be used in our case, which is neither qualitative because it's not one or zero, it's not a category, but it's also neither quantitative because it will count into all non-negative integers. Uh, uh, but in, if we use this quantitative, it will not be that. So in this case, uh, we, ha we have Two things that we had to uh, uh, to consider. The first is that the response cannot be negative. Uh, for example, if the weather is very worse, we use the linear model. Uh, it's a worse here with the linear model. We can see that the uh, coefficient here is a negative. So if we set other other predictors value to the zero, we can get a zero result that we cannot interpret uh, here. So the so this the result is uninterpretable uh, in this in this example, and the other thing that we have to take uh, to have to pay attention for is the heterostaticity, that is the unequal unequal spread, unequal variance across each level of our predictors uh, in terms of the result. Uh, for example, if we uh, if the if the if the if the predictor is uh, if if in in the work is in a work con conditions, we tend to have a uh, fewer back that be used in in our case. But uh, so the overall variation, the number of backs in this case will be low. There's not much variation here. The the variance of the number of cases is small. But if we in the better condition, the overall variation will be larger than that. That's that violates our assumption of the linear regression of the common uh, common equal variance case here. So this is a much important. This is a very important violation here that we that that makes us cannot consider the linear model. So here, how do we treat this case? We can use the net log transformation to our response model to our response variable here to to. To, to cope with that challenge. So here are three problems that uh, here is first is the, non -neg the negative number, second is the hero scatistic, and the second is that the value has to be integer. So here, how, how should we use the genetic form? First, uh, in our linear model, 
in our simple this the linear model, in our ordinary linear regression model, we assume that the underlying data is not uh, this uh, normal, which is uh, the underlying distribution is the normal distribution. But here we change that assumption to a uh, Poisson distribution, which models our data in, into the probability of that of the response value taken uh, on a given count value of k that we can calculate that probability and the function here is in this in this case in, is in this form and the, here the lambda which is the parameter of this uh, distribution represents both the expected value of each case uh, and the variance of each case in, uh, based on this we can show that the in, in our if, if the if the response follows the Poisson distribution, the larger we get of our mean value, the larger the variance we get. So here, if the uh, first of all, if if we take four cases, if first is if the net, if the parameter lambda here is one, that we can uh, that if we have four backs be taken at this time, the the corresponding probability of this case happening is here is very small, but if just no back be taken here. It be, the probability will be uh, near zero point four, and the other uh, and the graphs of other lambda is show at this. So we can see that at the uh, median, at the median, at the expected value growing, the variance is also growing. The the shape of the map is tend to spread out. Uh, so this is the features of the uh, Poisson regression. And uh, and the, based on that assumption, we want to model in the generic linear regression uh, here. That we also uh, assume that the the log the log of this case that is uh, with the given predictor that the specific result happens then happens at the specific value, the probability of that take a log, and the log function of that equals to a, a linear regression model that we are very familiar with. So this is the underlying modeling, uh, modeling, modeling function of the L, L, uh, GLM. And uh, based on that, we can, we can just uh, uh, back to our lambda, which is the expected value, and, uh, and take the e to the power of this function to get our result. The caveat of this uh, result is that we have to uh, interpret it, this result. For example, if we use this modeling uh, technique, we get this result, and we have this coefficient. For example, if the weather is cloudy or misty, uh, I, 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 would, I, I, think, I guess the base value zero is misty or cloudy or vice versa, but I, I don't remember. So if it is, the, re, the coefficient here is 0 0.8, so how do we interpret it? Uh, so yeah. Is that if the uh, weather uh, is uh, which is zero is clear weather, but the one corresponds to a cloudy sky, so a change in the weather from a zero to one, which is from clear to a cloudy sky, which is associated with a change of the mean back usage, which is the model with the uh, response value we're modeling here by a factor of this uh, this uh, e to the power of minus 0, 0 0.8, which results at uh, 0 0.19, uh, 192 and 3. That means that uh, if we the weather gets gets, gets worse, uh, only only 92.3 percent of as many people will use the back as compared to when it is clear. That is the uh, interpretation of this model. So the advantage here is that we can we can relax our our assumption of the common variance here that we can model this, uh, we can use this model to 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 represent the mean variance relationship in this case, and also this result will not get a negative value, and also the uh, uh, the, the negative value for our result because the the result we want to predict is the is the log value of a positive uh, probability of of some case happening here, so this this model fits our case. So, uh, so the overall method of our GLM is that we have to use some recipe here. For example, we state a set of predictors to predict the response model. 
and uh, model the response uh, as a as as a particular distribution in this case that as as a Poisson distribution, but we can model it into other distributions, and then we have to transform that uh, our 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 predictor function into a through VR link function here to get our model uh, as a, a generalized linear model here. So here is the uh, some of our view of the GLM. And then we can just uh, add some extra knowledge about the assumption behind the logistic uh, regression model here, that is GLM. That is the first we have to assume that uh, if we if we take a logistic regression, the underlying uh, of the underlying data, the response variable here has to one and zero have to be binary, so that we can take the uh, probability of the response variable. And the second, that is the uh, uh, operations have to be independent, or or rather, it will violate the assumption, uh, which we can see by our the diagnostic method of plotting the residues. Uh, and the third is that there's no multi narrative among each predictors, which we can use the VIA function to check that. And the third that it is no extreme outliers. And the third, fifth is that the underlying, uh, the relation between the explanatory variables and the logic of our responsible variables, the linear risk relationships. So, oh, I guess uh, it's pretty much the time, but uh, I'm sorry for that, but for my for my pouring explainability, uh, I, <laughs> I don't know if I explained this. Uh, it's great, but uh, the next time, the next week, we can uh, take a view of the exercise here, and maybe we can take a much more uh, review of what we have learned in this chapter. So, if you guys have any question, please feel free to come out, and that that's my that's that's that's, that's all. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Thank you very much. That, that was great. Okay. Thank you. Here. If you got any question, you feel free. Feel free to come out. Yeah, I think I'm gonna have to read that one again. Because <laughs> that one's oh, I'm sorry. a little more complicated. I'm sorry for my, but yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a bit of firstly it's a bit of complicated. The second is that I do not have that much ability to expand that into a simple into a clear case, right? No, I thought you did well. It's just a, it's a, I think the, 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 the material is more complex, so. Mm -hmm, yeah. Yes. And, All right, well. Uh, if, yes. If we're doing exercise, maybe we can, we can, we can uh, have a much clearer view of what it, it is, yeah. Yeah, although that particular screen does not look simple <laughs> yes yes so any okay. questions okay okay no um i'll I'll, okay. I'll hit stop in the chat and then stop the recording and then we'll uh we can meet again next week sound good okay okay